this dynamic of like having projects versus being like doing versus being and you've yeah. done a lot of both i mean you've started all these different monasteries and the monasteries that you've started are the ones that have been around you know the longest you know or yeah. some of the longest and uh yeah you know there are some monks who say you know give you know everything to being you know there's no place for for projects you know i've had um you know sometimes there's an encouragement yet yeah, young monks or monks shouldn't have projects you know you should just be meditating like something like this and i'm curious about what you would say about that the balance there well you know the the balance is is uh you know, is different for each person and different at different times for each person, you know, so that, that uh, you know, there's not, a, there's not a categorical answer for that. Um, but, you know, there is a, a uh, you know, because there's also, again, it's a category in terms of, I mean, what kind of, what kind of doing and what kind of being because you know there's there's <laughs> there's some of these meditators there's, there's this great uh, you know from the suttas and you know and he meditates and he out meditates and he mis meditates <laughs> you know and, you know he's doing he's yeah he's meditating but uh, you know it's it's all over the place uh, so <laughs> uh, but then you know also doing you know it's, you can uh, you know, there are things that, that uh, I think it's important that, that in, in, in that doing that there is a sense of, uh, you know, what am I doing it for? What benefit, what, what value is there in it? Um, uh, and, and not just in terms of um, personal aggrandizement or personal sense of accomplishment, but in terms of, of you know, how, how are others benefiting from this? <clears throat> and so that, that's, a, that's an important aspect of, of doing, but then also, you know, when does the doing bleed over into um, a, uh, a sense of, of uh, um, a sense of self that is is needed to be propped up, needed to be kind of it's when the image that comes up is you know in in uh, the, there used to be a there was a there was a, a commercial craze where people there was a, where people were buying pet rocks and you know so it's like looking after a pet rock and then it's one of the, <laughs> so you know it's just trying to try to squeeze something out of, of uh, uh, you know, experience for me. That's, that's not very useful. That's a good metaphor. <laughs> um, yeah. I <laughs> love for, uh, um, I have two questions. I don't know which one you'll gravitate more to, but, but either one I'd be very interested in. Um, one is in this balance of helping versus looking to one's own practice um you know I, for me there's never really been a um i've seen those two roots get conceptualized and maybe problematically uh distinguished into the bodhisattva and the arahant paths and yeah. i've never really felt that tension in myself i sort of feel what my practice is and that feels correct but i am curious how you interact with that very common uh, distinction that you, you see held up in two circles. And I know several practitioners who are trying to navigate that. Maybe they, you know, have a strong leaning towards the suttas, but they find themselves in a, another program and there's a lot of power to the bodhisattva ideal. Um, so actually I, I, that I, there's another question, but that one I am very interested in actually, in your take on. Uh, and to me, it's a false dichotomy. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it, again, you, you're you're as a uh, as a practitioner, you're uh, you know, you're you really are, or as a human being, you know, we're in contact with with other human beings, and uh, you know, are we um, contributing to the 
well-being and happiness of, of others or are we contributing to the increase of suffering and difficulty um, and um, you know and certainly the, the the goal of the of the bodhisattva is to decrease suffering and, and the goal of uh, you know say within a classic uh, uh, I mean uh, yeah I mean to me it's a false dichotomy the whole sort of arahant bodhisattva thing and and you know to to think that somebody like Ajahn Chah was a selfish arahant I mean that's yes <laughs> man uh, and and so many of the 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 the, uh, uh, the monks that. Uh, uh, teachers that I've seen and and lived with. I mean, they're deeply steeped in the in the cl kind of classical Theravada, um, but their you know, their their response to the human condition is one of yeah you know, one of com compassion and energy. <clears throat> These are not you know, even somebody like you know. You know, somebody, some say like Lopa Liam, who, you know, on the surface looks like a completely detached uh, uh, being, who uh, you know, steeped in equanimity, um, but uh, you know, it's really hard to keep up with him because <laughs> he's, you know, he's he's deeply involved in helping people uh, and you know the the monastics in in his own community the monastics around him the lay community the society in general I mean it's it's uh, uh, yeah it's hard to you know hard to hard to keep up I mean, you just have to I mean I think like the, I the, you know we had to do that with Ajahn Chah you'd have a <clears throat> You know, you would, you would have a, a daytime upatak and a nighttime upatak as a attendant, personal attendants looking after a need. Because one attendant looking after these a senior monk like that, you you just you just die. <laughs> you just can't, you, you, yeah, you know, you can't can't keep up with them. <laughs> so that that uh, you know, it is a to me. It's a false dichotomy. It's much more around the the uh, um, you know the, the response to to uh, uh, to the human condition and and uh, and that that uh, the uh, certainly the um, you know that was you know in the early you know of course uh, you know in in Buddhist history. Uh, it began being, or you know, it, it drifted into a very hard uh, or clear dichotomy. Um, but in the, in historically, the arising of the bodhisattva ideal um, was, you know, when you look at the <laughs> the vows of the bodhisattva and it's it's all it's, it's basically it's a reconfiguring of the four noble truths you know seeing suffering and vowing to 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 uh, uh, overcome it <clears throat> thank you i'm curious with um i know people who are working with marriage and relationship in in two different ways one is, and I'd be curious about your advice for both. Um, one is those who kind of embarked on this path but have a spouse who's not quite on board or at least not nearly at the same level um, of interest and and how they kind of work with that, balancing a relationship with actually, you know, really pursuing a path that they've found real meaning in. And the second is in the case that both partners are actually deeply passionate about the Dhamma and how, how they morph that relationship into one that's, that's a really helpful Dharmic partnership. And if you've seen any helpful tips for practitioners dealing with both of those scenarios. Well, I think certainly the, uh, 
when one is 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 has taken on uh, marriage, uh, and uh, then one has to be <clears throat> attentive to the uh, the the needs of one's partner, and and uh, and to not work from expectations, not not transposing one's own expectations onto onto the the, the partner. I mean, it's, it's a uh, um, it's, that's not an act of kind of love, and you know it's it's a uh, it's kind of selfish. Uh, so. So that that sense of of <clears throat> being able to okay one has one's because there's you know one has a, a certain independence uh, and and uh, but not because uh, oftentimes the you know the feeling of <clears throat> uh, kind of separation or distance that comes is usually because of you know, kind of expectation and wanting uh, one wanting another person to fulfill some ideal of themselves of the, for them and then for oneself trying to fulfill some ideal of external one's measuring it externally i need to practice or live in a certain way uh, and <clears throat> Uh, and so those are both kind of limited ways of perceiving and relating. Uh, so that learning how to tune more clearly into, like for a, a spouse, that is, because you can't expect uh, people to, I mean, it's, it's just even living in a monastery. I mean, you've lived in monasteries. Uh, people are definitely not the same. <laughs> It's just, it's, uh, and you know, you can't, you can't expect people to be the same, to have the same interests or values or commitment. And but you know, you can have a, you can have commitments to that are, you know, there's certain fundamental commitments that are 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 uh, are, are necessary or important. I mean, you want to, <clears throat> you want to have a foundation of of of, uh, of trust um, and that's where the sila is really important uh, that commitment to to sila and trusting in that person as a as a as a, as a person of integrity and treating them in that way <clears throat> and and then you know what it but then not 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 transposing one's kind of expectations of of uh, them performing in a certain way or being in a certain way or doing certain things uh because that's that's uh, i mean one uh, it's just what <laughs> <coughs> it's pretty hopeless anyway uh and and but it's also a a uh, you know people will will, will resist um, you know if if it's not something and that's what you know, one is of course the foundation of trust but then also there really needs to be a, a, a that kind of kindness and 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 relationship of you know how do how do we do this for our you know mutual well being. And and if there's children, and how do we do it for the well-being of, of, of children? So it's a, you know, that, those are hard things to be doing. But it's it's uh, you know it's important that uh, that that there isn't that <coughs> kind of uh, expectation or demand placed on each other, and, and, and to lay that foundation of trust. Uh, you know, for uh, uh, within a a relationship where there there is a you know commitment of to to spiritual practice, spiritual values that are very very similar, <clears throat> then it's it's just is is you know how do we how do we work together to 
uh, strengthen uh, those uh, uh, those those fundamental uh, spiritual foundations, uh, like they the was a, was Sanda Sutta Jakabanya, and the faith, learning, generosity, wisdom, um, those qualities. So how do we how do we mutually support each other in that 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 cultivation? Uh, and that's a, that. I think uh, those are the four qualities that the Buddha pointed to. To uh, uh, there's a couple that were uh, married for a long time. I can't remember their names right now. Nakula Mata, Nakula. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, no, yeah. The Nakula Mata, Nakula Pita. And uh, and uh, and when the Buddha is saying that, yeah, what, what you know, and this will be the the qualities that will draw you together in the next life. <laughs> that's what <clears throat> holds you together in this life is what draws you together in the next life. <clears throat> well, boy, that's a beautiful answer. And I mean, on the side of um, yeah, family life, you you really could have you know, succeeded in many different things, but you've really chosen to give your life to establishing monasteries. And monasteries, you know, that's one aspect of, of Buddhism, traditional Buddhism, which many Westerners, many, Amer many Americans don't yet really see the value of and you've given your life to it. you've been a monk for 48 something yeah this is the 49th coming up next 49. month wow. <laughs> and you've been an abbot i mean i'm 39 so you've been an abbot for 39 years and um so that's impressive but what is the value of monasteries what would you say to someone who didn't yet didn't yet see that value uh well i mean that's that's you think well in a, in a society of abundance, like, like, like we have now, I mean, there is an abundance of material things. Uh, there's an abundance of possessions. There's an abundance of, of everything. What there is a paucity of is good spiritual examples. Places of, of safety and refuge where you can go and feel safe. You can, you can be in that space and kind of relax. You know? And, and that's, that's something that this, this, this society is, inc is an incredible short supply. <clears throat> so that monasteries are, are, are that, uh, you know, that, that's, Ideally, that's that's what a good monastery can do is provide a a, 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 a physical place of refuge, of community, of uh, of refuge and safety. Thank you, Longpur. And um, I think the place you set up in Abayagiri, in large measure, was responsible for both of our going forth. Um, so you know, we have a great deal to owe our to. We owe you a great deal. And um, <laughs> thank you for, we know you have the meal um, and we just <laughs> wanted to say thank you so much for joining us long for it means, it means the world. Yeah, it was good to see you both. So take care and look after yourselves. Thank you. Do good, refrain from evil, <laughs> purify the mind, keep at it. <laughs> Our best. Great advice, thank you. <laughs>